Some while back I mentioned to a Patreon subscriber, I believe it was, he wanted to know how temperature affects velocity. Well, I've been aware of this for many, many, many years, and I think the best way to answer this is Les Bowman, many, many years ago, corresponded with DuPont. They make the IMR line of powders. And in this extensive correspondence at the time, he came up with the information and basically condensed it down fairly easily to be read. And I've had this information for years and Les Bowman and I, you know, talked about many of these aspects and to do with, with, with temperatures and velocities in the many, many hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of tests that Les and I, that Les and I ran developing loads for various cartridges. And some of this really came about, you know, during the, the, the time in the latter part of the 60s when Les and I were shooting dozens of different 17 caliber rifles in about that many chambers, about a dozen different chambers. And I don't think that anybody knew more about the 17s than Les and I with the testing that we did. But anyway, I'll get right to the, to the point here and I'm going to read what Les wrote P.O. Ackley and P.O. Ackley printed in one of his books many years ago on this basically how velocities and powder temperatures and one thing or another affect velocities. So here I'm going to read what Les has to say. Few hand loaders realize the difference temperatures of powders make in velocity and pressure. And the funny thing is that the top temperatures, that is from 72 degrees normal to 100 degrees, for instance, affects pressure more than from zero to 70 degrees above. As you would notice in the chart, this is 129 feet per second minus for the zero temperature reading at 4,000 feet a second speed of a bullet and 155 plus for the temperature about 70 to 100 degrees. Many sight in one day with a certain temperature and later when temperatures are perhaps different, 50 degrees different, they think their scope has changed when the group sprint at a different place. Also maximum loads worked up at say 40 degrees can be really dangerous at 90 to 100 degrees. It's the powder temperature that counts. We need to, we need to focus and, and pay attention it's the powder temperature that counts, not the temperature of the outside air. I have had a lot of correspondence with DuPont lately, and I am told by them that they figure 60 PSI, difference in pressure for every degree in powder temperature change. In the case of a 4,000 foot velocity at a high on the high side, of 155 and on the low side of 129 or a difference of a total of 284 feet per second. That would make 17,000 pounds difference in pressure. Now this is where the plot thickens. So I'm going to repeat something here and please don't, you know, email me and ask me more questions about this. I'm answering it right now. This is a difference of 60 PSI for one degree of temperature change and or as in this instance a difference of 17,000 pounds pressure. So if we're loading a cartridge, whatever that cartridge may happen to be, it's say 60,000 pounds and if we add 17 to that 60 plus 17 is 77,000 pound, pounds of pressure. Now there's no loading manual. There's nothing that lists loads in, for anything. I don't believe over 65,000 pounds. So 
or 65,000 PSI. Anyway, I'm going to further state that, you know, if you're shooting and it's 90 degrees and you've been out there for 15 or 20 minutes and you're in 90 degree heat and the sun's beating down on your ammunition at 90 degrees and it's laying there on your shooting bench and you go to load these rounds in your rifle, you're going to have a real quick surprise. You're probably going to pop a primer. And one of the first things that people always want to do, they will always want to blame the gun. They don't ever want to, you know, pay attention to really what's going on. They want to blame the gun. They want to blame the gun builder and so forth. They want to, man they want to you know, just come up with all kinds of excuses. Well, the fact of the matter is, is that whenever I work up loads here, work up loads, I have a fairly cool temperature in my workshop and in my powder storage cabinet and so my powders there's never anything that's above about 55 degrees perhaps at the most 60 degrees so my load work up mostly is done when the pot when the when the powder temperature is that and my outside temperatures are anywhere from around say around 40 to around 60 or 65 degrees but I don't sit there with sun bearing down on my ammunition. When I work up loads, I work up loads in the very early part of the day and because I'm where I'm situated and where my target faces and the end and the end of my my home, the end of my shop here, I have shade and I'm sitting at my shooting bench and I am in the shade. I'm always in the shade. So ammunition is never sitting on the bench for even just a few minutes with sun bearing down on it, it just does not happen. I don't work up loads and I don't shoot, you know, in the afternoon now when the sun has come around middle sky or, or further to where it shines back onto my shooting area on my loading bench. I had a fellow a few months ago that I built a very nice 270 rifle for and he'd had it for quite some time and I guess he decided to finally shoot it. And to his surprise, you know, he popped the primer. Well, he was wise enough to get a hold of me, and I had, had him send me the rifle to make darn good and sure. And I think, as near as I can discern, <coughs> that we confirmed the loads and so forth. And he was in California shooting in 90-some-odd degree heat. Well, it's pretty damn obvious, you see, that, you know, this was the problem why, why he popped the primer. And I wanted to certainly double check everything on his rifle, confirm that everything is correct on his rifle, the dimensions of his, of his chamber and one thing or another. I mean, he'd had this rifle for several years. And why he waited for so long, because he was in a hurry for the rifle, you know, to be able to get around and shoot it. But, you see, I'm relaying this as a, for instance, that right away they always want to, everybody, everybody, wants to blame something other than what it is. And so this is what you need to pay attention to. Let's say that you're coming from let's say that you're coming from some other part of the country and you're coming to, to Wyoming. You're coming to Wyoming in uh, you know in September. And quite often in Wyoming in September, out there on the prairies hunting antelope it's real easy to have 80 some odd, maybe 90 degree temperatures out there on the prairie. Well, if you're out there doing that sort of hunting, you see, and you've allowed your ammunition to get hot. Now, if this ammunition, even though the outside, the outside pressure, I mean the outside temperature is, you know, let's say it's 87 degrees out. Well, in your vehicle, in your vehicle, perhaps even an air-conditioned vehicle, you see, that powder temperature is not 87 degrees. The powder temperature is, is down somewhat more, maybe into the normal area. And normal is considered something under 70 degrees, but only normal out of the sun. It has to be out of the sun. This ammunition has got to be out of the sun. So, let's say you walked out across the prairie and, you know, you've got the rifle on your shoulder 
and you've got your cartridges in your magazine. Well, this is this this powder temperature has had a chance to rise in the magazine of your rifle. Maybe you've got a round chambered. Maybe you've got your safety on. One thing or another, and you know, one way or the other, whether well, the rounds are in the magazine or in your chamber, and you're out here in your 80 some odd degree heat. This this has had a chance. And if actually you actually reached up and grabbed a hold of your barrel in that 87 degree heat, you'd find that your barrel is pretty hot. It's hotter than what, you know, comfortable to hold your hand on it. I mean, not too hot, but it, it's hot. So there's some details here that you need to pay attention to. And I'm repeating again, it's the powder temperature. But this is also affected by the actual temperature of the day and sun beating down, sun beating down. If you've ever shot at 3 o'clock in the afternoon in an 87 degree day and sitting out there on the bench, three shots, your rifle barrel is too hot to touch. And any of our no almost all normal hunting calibers, the rifle barrel is too hot to touch. And these are details here. It's just, it's pretty simple. Just think about all these, all these aspects, you know. And if you've got a situation where you've got to drive from where you're at to a shooting range or whatever, it would be pretty smart to maybe, maybe put your ammunition in a, in, a, in a cooler, in a small little cooler or something like that to keep it cool and just take out three rounds at a time to check your rifle at the range. Let your rifle barrel cool. Don't sit there and shoot a half a dozen, six, eight, ten rounds. The hotter that it is, that, that ammunition in a hot chamber and a hot barrel is going to warm up somewhat and that may even affect things. So you need to pay attention to these details. If that powder temperature has risen from what is considered normal, you know, see, in degrees, we've just indicated that about 60, 60 pounds of pressure more per one degree of temperature. Well, let's go, let's go from the normal, you know, which I consider more normal, somewhere around maybe 60 degrees or so. Let's go from there up to the 90s. Now, that's a 40-some-odd degree temperature change, and you could have a considerable, just like indicated, considerable rise in pressure in your in your ammunition and this is not what you want this is not at all what you want so I think I've answered this fairly simply and if you'd like to know more about it I suggest that perhaps you know you maybe need to need to go to a library and you know P.O. Ackley had P.O. Ackley put out several several loading books on his gunsmithing and different cartridges and one thing or another and in in one of his volumes here this is volume two on page 96 of P.O. Ackley's loading manual there's other details and it details very finely in very very fine detail pressures temperature by the degrees and what the rise is across the spectrum of things. But we don't have time here in a video to read entirely every last thing that is printed there. So go to the library, get one of those, or buy a P.O. Ackley loading book, volume two. It's all there. It's what you need to know to pay attention if you're an interested hand loader. I will put in the link in the description below different links where you could possibly buy these out of print books and so look down there if you're interested in buying the book thank you for watching we appreciate it bye